Hello guys, in this video I present you the Peak Tech 1404 oscilloscope. I needed an oscilloscope because I'm working on a new big project. In fact, I'm modifying my lathe once again and I want to transform it into a CNC lathe with an electronic lead screw. But in order to control the electronic components like the rotatory encoder shown here in the photo, I needed an oscilloscope. Actually, I also have a multimeter, but I quickly realized that this is not enough for this type of measurement. At the end of the video, I will show you how I verify the proper functioning of the encoder, and I must say that this small but powerful oscilloscope did not disappoint me. In my opinion, it's a must-have for anyone who enjoys tinkering with electronics, and I can only recommend this machine. But let's take a look at some features together. The PicTech 1404 has two channels, one with sampling rates of 1 giga samples per second and one with 500 mega samples per second. It also has a bandwidth of 100 MHz. The maximum horizontal scale is 1 millisecond per division and a minimum scale of 2 nanoseconds per division. The maximum vertical scale is 5 volts per division and the minimum is 2 millivolts per division. The vertical resolution is 8 bits. The oscilloscope can record 10,000 points and has a 17.5 inch screen with 800 by 480 pixels, which is more than enough. The buttons are all made in soft rubber, which feel nice to the touch and responds very well to the commands, while at the back it is equipped with a USB port for connection to the computer. The startup is quite fast. The first thing to do is to calibrate the two supplied probes using a small screwdriver. We need to connect to the ground and to the built-in signal generator which emits a square wave and then adjust a small screw incorporated in the probe so that we have perfect horizontal lines on the graph. This procedure should be done from time to time. The menu is very clear and the blue buttons are used for navigation while the multi-purpose wheel can be used when a yellow M appears in the menu. Obviously, you can set the language, the screen and many other parameters. At the bottom of the oscilloscope, there are various physical buttons like utility, auto calibration, which is very useful for automatic settings, measurement, acquisition and so on. With the math button, we have a lot of options to measure our signal and of course the fast Fourier transform or FFT. With the button measurement, we can have an overview of all various values. Another function that I think is really useful is the persistence mode, which simulates old oscilloscopes and leaves a sort of echo of the signal on the screen that fades away slowly. The duration can be set from a few seconds to infinity. Of course, you can modify the various scales both for voltage and time and adjust the graphical representation to analyze the parts of the signal that are of interest. Another very useful function is the HOR, which practically allows you to zoom in in a portion of the signal and analyze it closely. But now let's analyze the proper functioning of the encoder that I told you at the beginning. Now, I won't show you how to connect all the wires, also because it's quite boring. The important thing to know is that there are two data signals that the encoder emits with each rotation. And normally, these two signals are not emitted in the same time. First, the A signal should arrive, and then the B signal or the opposite depending on whether the encoder is rotated clockwise or counterclockwise. As a power source, I use a bench transformer and set the voltage to 5 volts. Obviously, you can use any transformer, or a battery or even Arduino. As you can see in the measurement, I obviously use both probes. The two channels are represented by two colors, blue and yellow. You will see that when I rotate the encoder, 
there are two signals on the two channels, but they never start at the same time. One arrives first and then the other, and depending on whether I turn it on one way or the other, you can see a square wave first on one channel and then on the other. With the stop button, I can also stop the measurement and then analyze the situation better with the various tools described earlier. I must say that this product is very useful and I recommend you to visit the PeakTech website and take a look. Also, don't forget to give a thumb up if you like the video and subscribe if you don't want to miss any upcoming projects. I hope to see you soon on my channel. You're Robbie.